hello welcome all welcome in another important video i hope you all are doing great so this video onwards we'll be starting with solidity programming language with the help of solidity we will try to write some ethereum smart contracts and after writing smart contracts we will try to deploy it on ethereum blockchain so now what is solidity solidity is programming language and it is not just a programming language it is object oriented programming language so if you might have learned programming languages such as java or maybe c++ or maybe javascript they all works on object oriented principle so in object oriented programming language we declare classes we write functions inside of it we declare some properties inside and then we try to use that properties and functions by creating object of that class so when we will write our first program in solidity you will observe that this syntax is somewhat similar to classes syntax of javascript solidity is also high level programming language so the code that we are going to write in solidity will be just in english words it is high level language code right so reason why we are learning solidity programming language is because we want to create smart contracts we'll see what is smart contracts and how it actually works in a moment but for now let's know more about solidity So Solidity is highly influenced by three programming languages C++, Python and JavaScript and as I already told you that when we will write our first Solidity program you will observe that this is a combination of C++, JavaScript and Python syntax. So learning syntax of Solidity and understanding it will not be too much difficult if you know this if you know any one of this language all right another thing that we need to know about solidity is it is statically typed language that means the variable declaration type as well as your function returning type should be declared by the time of compilation so this is statically typed language another thing is it supports inheritance libraries complex user interface and lot of other things right now here they have given some of the use cases of solidity so we can create voting application we can create crowd funding application blind auctions we can create multi signature wallets using solidity smart contracts so we'll try to write our own solidity smart contracts in upcoming videos so by the time i'm recording this video current version of solidity is 0.8.11 and this is really important because solidity is still growing and it is improving so the which the version that you're using uh, might have some bugs and it is recommended to use latest version of solidity all the time all right so now let's try to understand what is smart contracts because eventually using solidity we are going to create smart contract so smart contracts is nothing but a contracts that executes itself right so this is a documentation of investopedia i'll put the link in the description so smart contract is nothing but a contract that executes itself so in general terms when we use contracts because we want to agree on some terms and conditions let's say if you want to take any house for on a rent you will contact to the house owner house owner will create contract with terms and conditions written and he will ask you to sign on that contract so as soon as you agree on this terms and conditions your contract will get complete in the same way in blockchain we write smart contracts when we want to do some transaction between two parties since we know that blockchain works on a principle of peer to peer network person if any person a wants to send some ethereum to person b he can easily do that without need of any other middle party so in a blockchain also we requires contracts because let's say if we want to send some money from account a to account b so in that case there will be a lot of different conditions that we need to check and that all conditions gets checked by our smart contracts so smart contracts check if the person a has that balance in his account or not which he wants to send to person b if the balance is not sufficient smart contract will simply reject that request so there will be a lot of different other conditions that needs to check before actual transaction will get complete and that gets taken care by smart contracts now the reason why we call this smart contract is because there is no involvement of central parties and whenever new transaction gets requested smart contracts check all the conditions and based on the conditions results it fulfills that requirement all right so i hope you have understood the basics of smart contracts so let's take another example here here is again nice diagram provided by investopedia 
and as you can see this is the current situation when someone wants to buy any house he has to contact seller and lawyers brokers and insurance persons will be the middleware they will create contract for you and if both parties will be agree on that contract bob, bob will be able to sell that house to a lease we can do the same thing using smart contract but here is slight different if a lease want to buy house from bob he has to simply request in that contract and based on the conditions of the contract if a lease agree on that smart contract condition bob will be able to sell his house to a lease and entire transaction will be recorded on this blockchain so here is some of the benefits of using smart contracts first is once you execute your smart contracts you cannot change it let's say if alice don't want to buy his house and he initiated a transaction he cannot reverse it let's say if alice is not agree on some of the terms and conditions and he want to stop his transaction he cannot do that because it is already stored on a blockchain and you cannot change anything in a blockchain unless and until you have majority votes on your side so that is the benefit of smart contracts because if someone wants to cheat or someone wants to uh, someone wants to disagree that agreement he will not be able to do that right again the second benefit of using smart contract it is completely transparent so if someone wants to check any transaction inside of the blockchain and he has enough access to get that information he can easily grab that information and see and see that transactions the next thing is traceable let's say if alas is the first owner let's say if bob is the first owner of his house and he sell it to the alice then alice sell it to next person and the next person sell it to another person so you can trace the first owner of this transaction with the help of blockchain you can build a trust i think that's enough for the introduction from the next video we will create our first ever smart contract using solidity so i think that's it for this video thank you very much for watching see you in the next video bye hello welcome all welcome in another important video and in this video we will write our first ever solidity contract so if i scroll it little bit down as you can see here in the documentation they have given suggestions to install all the dependencies which is required to write and compile a solidity contract in your local machine but since we are just getting started we don't want to install this in our local machine there is another way we can use remix id now remix id is specially designed for writing smart contracts and it has a local version as well as online version so we are going to use online version so you just have to click on this link you will be able to see this type of user interface so this is online id and before we start writing our smart contracts let's see what this id provides us so as you can see here they have given me default workspace and it has three folders with one readme text file so let's open this contract file and here you will be able to see .sol file and this is basically nothing but your solidity file so so we save a solidity file with extension .sol so if i open this so you can see this is the default code that they have provided us and if i open this script stack here you will be able to see there is a js files so now this js files hold code of web3 library there has to be some link between the websites and our solidity contract code so that gap filled by web3 library so we'll also learn how to use this web3 in our upcoming videos but for now we are just mainly going to deal with this contracts folder right then after that you will get to see there is a tests folder again we are not going to change anything in this file all right so this is nothing but our workspace so now if we want to change our workspace we can create add button here and we can create our own workspace if we want and all created workspaces will be able to see in this drop down list we can switch between the workspaces according to our convenience according to our requirements all right also we can see there is a rename option here so if i want i can change his its name and my workspace name has changed so this is just a file management tab and if i click 
tab just below that file management tab you will be able to see this compiler options so now this compiler options gives us different versions of solidity and as we already saw in our earlier videos by the time i'm recording this video the current version of solidity is 0.8.11 so this all versions you will be able to see here so if you have any smart contract which is which is designed on 0.6.1 or any other previous versions so you can simply select that compiler version and you'll be able to compile your code here all right and then there is language option so since remix is an ide it's not specifically designed for solidity it also support different technologies which are again helping us to create smart contracts so we can select our language accordingly since we are going to create our contract in solidity itself so we'll keep this solidity selected then there is emium version and you don't have to change anything just keep this default one then there is auto compile option so let's say if i change anything inside of this contract so and i don't want to compile this each time by the way this is the button uh, we have if we want to compile our code as soon as i click on this as you can see we got this green tick that means our solidity code is compiled successfully also we'll be able to see this publish on ipfs and inside this console we will get to see some messages so if you want to automate this process you can keep this selected so as soon as i change anything inside of it it will auto compile and give us suggestions initially I, I will not recommend you to do this because you will forgot all the steps keep all this disabled and let's move on to the next tab so this tab is your deployment tab so whatever the contract you have compiled and you want to publish that contract so you can deploy it that deploy that contract from here so let's start with an environment here is a different types of environment you will get to see we'll keep this javascript vm uh, selected and then there is an account now this is the important part so remix id gives us different accounts just to test our solidity contract because whenever we will create or initiate any transaction there has to be some accounts linked with our solidity code so that our solidity code will be able to deduct amount from that contract so this each account will have 100 ethereum and this is just a demo accounts uh, which we can use just for the testing so they have given multiple different accounts which we will use in our upcoming videos then there is a gas limit now gas limit is something that required for mining and we'll see what is gas limit what is gas price and all concepts related to the gas in in separate video for now let's just keep this by default right then there is some value so if i want to transfer some ethereum from this account into my solidity contract so i can use and i can put that amount here and while transferring that amount i need to choose ethereum units so these are different units ethereum is the highest unit and then there is a funny unit then guai unit and ve unit so ve unit is the lowest unit so one ethereum will be this much ve and this is really important especially when we want to transfer or do some transaction between one account to another account so if we want to transfer one ve and instead of that we keep one ethereum uh, as unit so our one ethereum will get deducted but again if we have that one in one ethereum in our account then only it will get deducted otherwise transaction will fail we'll understand all these units in depth in our upcoming videos for now let's just move on then there is smart contract so remember we have compiled this contract compile to owner dot sol and that's what we will get to see here so which contract we want to deploy that we can select from this drop down list and as soon as i click on this deploy button my contract will be deployed on blockchain so now this is the default blockchain and this is not the main ethereum blockchain so this is just a testing environment all right so if you can see here inside the console i'll get all information 
related to the deployment this much this much gas uh, got deducted from my account and if i see here the amount has deducted from my account all right so here we will get to see some drop down list and this is nothing but our contract which got deployed and these are all functions inside of this smart contract this is the benefit of using remix id remix id provides user interface to interact with our smart contract i think this is all about remix id now we will start writing our first ever solidity contract all right so now pretty excited we are about to write our first ever ethereum smart contract using solidity all right so let's start creating new file inside of this contracts folder so let me right click on it and here we will give name for our smart contract so we'll write hello world smart contract so you have to initialize this sequence with four underscore and this will again helpful in the case when if you want to create multiple smart contracts and you want to execute it in sequentially so that syntax will help you so this is hello world and we have to give file extension that is dot sol so this is the file that we are going to mainly deal with let me close all other files okay so now this is our code so the first thing that we need to define is the version of solidity so now version of solidity we can define using pragma and solidity and then there are two different ways through which we can define the sequence we can define the version of solidity either we can write simple 0.8.0 something like this or else if you want to keep a range of the versions so let's say if you want any version in between let's say if you are okay with any version in between 0.5.0 to the latest one which is 0.8.11 so in that case we can write it like this so it will be 0.4.0 and should be lesser than 0.9.0 okay then and after that we, we can start writing our contract so same like we declare classes in javascript we can write contract and we have to give name to this contract so we'll give hello world as a name then open and close curly braces and this is the scope of our contract so inside of this we can declare multiple variables so i'm going to declare one variable with string and that is why we call solidity as a statically type because we have to provide type or data type of the variable initially so here is our message let's say this is our message which we want to display and that's pretty much it let me save this now as you can see as soon as i save this i got this icon and it is saying that there is something wrong in our code and we have to end this line with the semicolon so now this should work again it is giving me one warning so if you might have noticed this changes so red sign indicates that there is an error and as soon as there is an any warning it will give us an orange color so we can avoid warnings we'll see what is that warning later on but for now let's try to compile our code so as soon as i compile so it is already compiled and if i go inside of this deploy tab and try to deploy this contract let me open console again so as you can see we got a new message that means our contract is deployed but here we cannot see anything reason being there is no public value we cannot see this message because there is, it is not public uh, this is only limited for this contract so if we want to see this message we need to make its visibility to public let's save this compile it again and 
let me remove this and deploy it again so it is deployed and if you can see here we got this message because this is public right so if i click on this i'll be able to see its message okay now let's try to resolve this warning and this warning is all because svdx license identifier so any open source project right there are different type of licenses so now in case if you're wondering why do we provide why do we need to declare licenses for open source project because there will be many project which has certain limitations so let's say you have one github repository which is open source project but the owner of this github repository set some instructions you don't want you to change anything in core values you can just develop your applications on, on the top of it you cannot change the core part of that technology okay that is the that is the reason there is multiple different types of open source licenses so for now we just don't want to do anything with that this becomes important in case when we want to create some business out of this smart contract but for now we are just learning so we can simply go and default contracts and we will copy this commented line and this will resolve our issue we paste this Let's save this as you can see we got this green tick that means our contract is compiled successfully okay and there is no error here all right so there are a few other things we need to understand and that is nothing but artifacts so let me quickly delete this folder for now and let me select this and as soon as i compile this code you will see artifact folder will automatically get created so if i compile this so as you can see we got this artifacts folder so now this artifacts folder basically hold important data when we want to deploy our smart contract so let's see what type of data this artifact folder holding so it has generated two different files one is meta file and one is normal json file so this meta file holds this abstract banner interface and we can see that even here as soon as we compile our code so this abstract banner interface is nothing but the interface that is required when we want to communicate from one contract to another contract you can even read about this in detail in this smart contract in this documentation but the ultimate use case of this abstract banner interface is allowing other contracts to communicate with our contract so now if i copy this abstract banner interface and paste it in any text editor so you can see this is how the abstract banner interface looks like so we have some inputs we have name outputs and this is nothing but the information about the code that we have written inside of our smart contract so if i compare my code with this abstract banner interface you can see the name of the variable is message and you can see this is message variable again it is type internal string and then we can view this from outside and whenever we declare any public variable so so get method automatically gets set by the smart contract so that is the reason why we able to see this that is the reason why we able to see this value from here okay so this is information that required for other contracts to interact with our contract okay let's say if the value of this state mutability is not view so will that smart contract will not be able to see that message variable value from other smart contracts so that is so in short abstract binary interface helps other contracts to decide which value is visible which functions are visible and which is not all right then there is one more important value which is byte code and this byte code value is important for ethereum virtual machine and this is nothing but set of instructions let me copy this and paste it here so as you can see there is some opcodes which is giving some instructions like push then there is swap and then push add all these instructions is helpful for ethereum virtual machine to decide what to do with the smart contracts okay and this op codes gets generated from this object 
right and you can even read more about this opcodes so there is a set of instructions that helps ethereum virtual machine to decide what to do with this smart contract as soon as it got deployed on ethereum virtual machine all right so this is just a basic introduction of how the compilation works so we have simply created our first ever smart contract and we write some variable inside of it and we try to get value of that variable after deployed now what if we want to change this message so let me write one function and okay this is the way of writing function inside ethereum smart contract uh, inside the solidity smart contract and we can say set message okay and so my plan is to pass some value from here and change the value of this message variable so in that case i will be passing string value and the value will be the message value so this message variable is different than this parameter so let's keep this underscore message so whichever the contract that i saw they follow this of syntax so we'll keep the same right and its visibility will be public again and it will not return anything so let's keep this as it is all right so now as soon as we receive this message we will allocate that message value to this message i think that's it okay so let me save this okay so there is one error and the error says that data location must be memory or call data all right so in solidity there are different memory locations we'll see in depth about this memory location but for now just keep this memory uh, just write memory in between variable and its type okay so now our smart contract is compiled successfully let's compile it again and let me delete all other deployed contracts so now there is no contract so i can deploy it so we got this message again and if i open it you can see there is a method so now i'll change this message by jhm or let's say be humble right and set this message and if we see this variable message now the value has changed right again if we want we can write one more one more method just to see this message value let's say this message variable is not public and in that case we will not be able to see that variable value so we can write get message function and get message function and we don't need to pass anything here okay the, the type will be public and we are going to return this variable so we need to write returns and the type of value we are going to return so it will be string value so let's write string and simply return this value so it should not be returns it should be just a return okay so we got we got again some warnings but it is not an error so we'll compile this code let's delete this deployed contract and deploy it again now here we got this get message value so if i try to see its value i'm not able to see and the reason is this should be view we deploy it again and if i delete it let's deploy it again okay so now here we got this message so now if i change this with be humble and 
okay so it is working and if i see it is be humble now each time we are setting something inside of the smart contracts our ethereum wallet values are getting decreases with each changes in our code so let's say the last number is 297 and if i set something here and now if i check it again so i can see it has changed let's try it one more time so you can see there is every single time when we change anything inside of the smart contracts we have to pay some ethereums and that ethereums value is nothing but gas value we'll see more about this in our upcoming videos but if you observe same thing with the get message method so there will not be any gas value so if i click on this and you can see there is no gas parameter in it reason being ethereum only pays when you want to make changes inside of the smart contract if you just want to see values inside ethereum smart contracts you don't have to pay any gas fees so that is the difference between set and get method okay, so we just saw how to create compile and deploy our ethereum smart contracts using solidity so i think that's it for this video thank you very much for watching see you in the next video bye hello welcome all welcome to another important video in our solidity course here we are learning about different types of variables in solidity so learning about different types of variables in solidity becomes important because transaction cost of each transaction it depends on the variables we'll see what is that in a moment but here is the different types of variables in a solidity one is state variables which is nothing but the variables that gets stored permanently in a contract and most of the times we make changes in permanent variables itself in order to make it available for others and do some important work in the in that particular contract then there is uh, local variables the variables that mostly not required outside of the functions that we declare in this local scope and then another different type of variables is global variables where these global variables provides us information regarding the blockchain and the contract related information so we'll see each of this uh, in one by one so let's start with this state variables so state variables we have already used in our previous video when we saw example of hello world smart contract so this is how the state variables looks like we declare state variable as soon as we start contract scope so state variables we can use whenever we want inside this contract so as you can see this variable is available in this function as well as this function so we can change state variables as well as we can see information in that state variable inside this particular contract all right so let me quickly compile this and let's see what is the difference between state variable and local variables so let me delete our deployed contract and our contract is already compiled so if i use any other different account which has 100 ethereum values and if i deploy this as you can see some cost is deducted because every single deployment requires some gas fees to pay to the miners so last four digits is 2933 at the moment as soon as i make some changes inside the contract let's say if i want to change this message and for that we have this function which is state message and as soon as i pass any value inside of it it will change this state variable message all right so if i see current last four digits for this ethereum wallet is 2933 and if i send something and our transaction is completed so we can see it here some value from our wallet got deducted now this is because every time if we want to make some changes in our existing contract so we have to pay some gas fees and this gas fees is dependent on how many operations we are performing in that smart contract in order to complete the entire transaction so if number of operations are high 
so gas fees will be higher right so transaction cost is 30142 for our last transaction so let's see this one more time if i make few more changes if i set it a transaction completed and if i go back here and check again from some value from our ethereum wallet got deducted and if we see gas fee or transaction cost for this time it is again 30214 now we know that whenever we make any changes inside the state variables it is costing us some transaction fees but what if we want to just see value and not to change the value so in that case will it cost transaction fee or not so let's see this so here is the get message method and if i click on this it will give me exact value inside this state variables so now again i have requested this value so will it cost us transaction fee or not let's demonstrate this as well we have 2577 last four digits in our wallet and if i click on this and go back here and see this so our our ethereum balance is exact same so now the question might have arise in your mind like why it is costing us fee when we want to make any changes inside the contract and why it is not costing us any fee when we want to fetch this value now its answer is inside the entire operation of this blockchain so this is the diagrammatic representation of how each transaction in ethereum looks like so let's say a person a wants to send some money from a his account which is account a into account b so in that case he will initiate new transaction request and that transaction request will go inside the ethereum blockchain but by the time it will go inside the ethereum blockchain it will be in unconfirmed state so in order to make it confirm transaction someone have to solve the complex mathematical operations in order to complete this transaction so who will solve this problem so those are the miners Okay, so miners are those person who solve the complex mathematical operations in order to complete the transaction initiated by any particular user. So let's say user A initiated a transaction; it will go inside unconfirmed state pool, and miners will fetch that transaction and solve the mathematical problems. And once miner able to solve that mathematical operation, it will ask or it will let other nodes know that okay this transaction is completed and if all nodes or majority of nodes will be agree on this block they will add that block in actual blockchain so this is how the entire transaction process works so now the miners will not do it for free because using their cpu power their electricity in order to solve your transaction so they will have to get paid somehow so in that case we use this gas fees which is getting deducted from each transaction now this transaction fees is depend on how many operations we are doing inside of each transaction so if transaction is doing multiple operations so it will cost much higher gas fees and if transaction is simple then it will cost less gas fees so the basic thing we can keep in our mind that whenever we are making changes in a contract we have to pay gas fees whenever we are not making any changes in a contract we don't have to pay anything all right so now let's have a look in let's have a look into other type of variables another type of variable which is local variable and if we can see here the variable value presents till function is executing what does this mean is well in order to declare any local variable we just make this let's make copy of this function let's rename this by message 1 and we'll declare variable inside of the function instead of declaring it state variable uh, let's change its name as well all right so now we have one method which is which name is set message whatever we will pass as a parameter it will get stored inside of this message one variable now this is local variable and if i try to use this message one variable in this function it will not be available all right so it will get deleted as soon as this function executed successfully so it is giving me error saying we need to declare this string memory type so let's write memory okay and again it is giving error saying we have to make this function as a pure function so let's make it pure as well 
okay so then now there is no error or com- our code is compiled successfully let me deploy this okay so if you can see here we have one more set message function so now if i change anything it is working completely fine so let's see the current last four digits in our wallet which is 3279 and now we are making changes inside our contract again and so now technically it should cost us some ethereum values and this value should get deducted from our account right so last four digits are 3279 so let me call this function so it is completed successfully and if i go back here and see still there is no change inside the wallet still the value remains same and this is because we are making change in our local variable not the global variable and this is the major difference between local variables and the state variables right so state variable changes will cost some ethereum values will cost some gas fees while changes in local variable will not cost anything because we are not making changes inside the contract we are making changes in this particular function itself so that is the major difference between local variables and state variables right so even though we make changes or we want to fetch values from the local variables it will not cost anything but if we want to make changes in state variables it will cost some ethereum values or some gas fees so we just saw two different types of variables in in the smart contracts okay so now we need to make wise choices whenever we will write our actual ethereum smart contract between local and state variables because the based on how we write our contract it will decide the efficiency of that contract all right so let's move on to next type of variable which is global variables now these global variables are those variables which gives us information regarding our blockchain and information regarding our contract so let's see what is that so here is the cheat sheet okay so you will see here which type of variables or which type of values you can access from this global variables so as you can see here we have this base fees function through which we can check the current block fee and then there is chain id there is coinbase and there is a lot more information we can fetch from the blockchain declare one more function and try to fetch its values okay so now we don't need to make set method copy we need to make get method copy right because we want to fetch value so now the return type will be unit unsigned integer which is u int and the return which let's fetch this gas limit value so let's paste this all right so now it is saying data location okay so we don't need to make this as a memory okay so now let's compile this again and if i deploy it our contract is deployed let me delete earlier one let's deploy it one more time and if i as you can see here we have this global value function okay so now if i click on this we saw this gas limit value so this is gas limit let's see what else we can fetch so we can fetch block number so this is nothing but whenever we make any changes inside the smart contracts each change will be considered as a new block so this block number will give us the current value of the block okay so now we need to make compilation and if i deploy it one more time now let's see global value so current block is 16 so now if i make any transaction and if i fetch value so it will change okay so now each time when i'm changing anything new block will get add and block number will get increase right so this is the three different types of variables in 
the solidity and okay so now we have better idea about different variables this is slightly different than all other programming languages because whenever we write any inefficient code in programming languages such as java or javascript it doesn't cost us direct money right but in solidity if we make any extra variable change uh, if we write any extra variable in our state variables it will cost us gas fees each time so that is the difference between different types of variables i hope you have understood entire concept so i think that's it for this video thank you very much for watching see you in the next video bye hello welcome all welcome to another important video and in this video we will learn about gas price gas is the value that we need to pay with each transaction if we want to make any changes in the values of existing deployed smart contract so we already saw this gas price in our previous video where we try to deploy our hello world smart contract and in that we used set message function so we saw that whenever we want to change something in our existing state variable so we'll have to pay some gas values so let's see this one more time in action let me quickly compile this and let me delete deployed contracts let's deploy it one more time so our contract is deployed and if i open this so this is set method we have in order to change this existing message let me try to change something here and let's say send all right so now if i open this console message and we saw here here you will get to see there is a transaction cost and this is nothing but the amount of gas fees that we have to pay to someone now the question is why do we need to pay these transaction fees and to whom we need to pay these transaction fees the reason why we need to pay this transaction fee because there is an involvement of miners in this transaction so before we start learning about how to calculate transaction fee what is gas fees and all the stuff related to that let's understand the entire flow so now let's say someone initiated a transaction that transaction will go in ethereum blockchain and it will be there in unconfirmed state so now in order to make this transaction confirmed there is a requirement of miners so miners will fetch that unconfirmed transaction they will solve that complex mathematical problems and then after that once miner able to solve that problem miner will add that block in this existing blockchain and this is how the entire transaction will get complete but now miners will use their cpu power miners will use their electricity so they will not do it for free we'll have to pay them somehow so that miners will keep on doing it right and that's exactly when gas fees comes into the picture so each transaction that we are doing will require some addition operation some multiplication operation or whatever the operations that transaction will require based on that gas price gets decided now let's move on to how the gas price gets decided right so this is the formula to decide gas price the final price of the gas will get deducted from your account will be the multiplication of gas spent into the price of gas okay so now gas is nothing but unit for computation because let's say your transaction will require some operations some computations to perform they might be complex they might not be complex but each of this operation will need some cpu power to spend on and that is nothing but the computation right so gas spent is nothing but total amount of gas used in the transaction right which we need to multiply by current price of gas and then after that we will get final price which is nothing but this which we already paid from our fake account right okay now there is still some points that we need to understand now the question is who will decide this gas price right so now gas price gets decided based on opcode we already discussed about this opcode a little bit in our earlier videos so opcode gets generated as soon as we compile our ethereum smart contracts and we will get our opcode in this compilation tab you can just copy this byte code so opcode gets generated from byte code right so let me copy this and let me paste it somewhere so that we can see it right let me paste it here okay 
So now you can see here, this is our opcode and this is a long string which is holding some space separated values. So now this, if you see this opcode closely, you will be able to see there is some instructions like push, add, M store. So these are nothing but instructions that requires for Ethereum virtual machine and that instructions helps Ethereum virtual machine to decide what to do with this contract, right? Okay, so now this each operation have some gas fees associated with it. So now I have a list of this gas fees as you can see here. If someone wants to perform addition operation, then he will need to pay three gas fees, right? Then if someone want to do multiplication, then he will have to pay five gas. So now this value is depend on how complex that operation will be. So certainly the multiplication will be more complex than addition. And that is the reason addition fees are lesser than the multiplication fees. So now this is the data of 2017. This prices might vary. These values are just for our understanding, right? So now once we have this addition multiplication operations, so now whatever the transaction we are making, that transaction will also require some addition operations, some multiplication operations. Sometimes it requires timestamp or all these operations, right? So now based on how much operations required for per transaction, this is how the final price gets calculated. And this opcode values get decided by Ethereum community, right? Now let's try to understand this even more better. Let's say addition price decided by Ethereum community is three and multiplication price decided by Ethereum community is eight. We'll take the same value which we saw here. Now, let's say our transaction requires two addition operations and one multiplication operation. So total amount of gas that we need to pay for this transaction will be two into five, sorry, two into three plus 8 into 1 and this so total amount total number of gas total amount of gas fee we need to pay is 14 gas but this value will vary reason being there is a minimum limit of gas per transaction you this value cannot go below that and there is a lot of other concepts uh, and there is few other concepts that decided price of each price of gas per transaction right but just for our understanding this is the amount of gas that we need to pay because we want to perform some operations in our contract. The reason why we are understanding this concept is because while writing Ethereum smart contracts, we'll need to make sure that minimum operations and we need to optimize our code in order to reduce this gas fees. All right. So now we know we have opcode, which has some values associated with it and amount of operations we are performing in that smart contract that ultimately deciding the price of gas that we need to pay per transaction. Now we know who decide the price of gas fees. So price of gas fees is dependent on the programmer because programmer will write smart contracts and in that smart contract there will be some operations there will be some operations and based on that itself and the ultimate cost of gas will get decided. So programmer will control gas price indirectly. And then there is Ethereum community which decide how much cost that how much gas is required for that particular operation. So these two people decide the price of gas. Now there is one more concept which is nothing but gas limit. Let's say if any transaction has a huge number of operations there is a multiple operations and ultimately gas price will be higher right so we have to decide maximum number of gas one can spend on each transaction and that is what we can see in here okay so this is the default value that remix id is giving us and this value is in way unit okay so now let me quickly change this value this is 300 way Right. Let me deploy our contract again. And now if I try to change some value here, it is allowing me to do and amount of gas spent here is 3024. Now we need to check what is our gas limit, right? So we already saw this global variables and through that. 
okay so we have to check this cache limit so let's change it by this save this let me compile our code again and let me delete this let's deploy and if i see here let me fetch these global values right so now if i try to fetch it this value as you can see we got this message saying base fees exceeded gas limit so the reason why we and this is occurring because we kept gas fees low so now this transaction requires gas fees more than this 300 way so now if i increase this and deploy it again and if we close this let's use new contract if i fetch it now i will be able to see there is this number now things are getting pretty clear whenever the transaction is in progress the gas price gets automatically calculated and every single time when the new gas price gets calculated it gets compared with this gas limit so if the current transaction exceeded the limit of this gas limit so then the transaction will automatically gets closed and it throws an error like we saw here and if the transaction is consuming lesser gas fees than the given limit then the transaction will get complete okay so now we can see that here we can see with our example also if the transaction limit is set in this particular example is 30 way so this transaction will get complete but what if we set it to 10 way and ultimate gas fees that we require to complete this transaction is 14 but the limit is set to 10 so this transaction will not get complete so that is all about gas fees and how it is getting calculated in ethereum smart contracts i hope you have understood this entire video thank you very much for watching see you in the next video bye